Hey everybody, this is the Sliders Review, and I'm here today to talk to you about Villains of Valley View Season 1 Episode 3. So, the first five episodes has just dropped on Disney+. Plus. I'm surprised only five and not ten, but hey, I'll take whatever they give, you know what I'm saying? Um, I almost called this Wizards of Waverly Place. It's just too uncanny how this is way too similar to Wizards and stuff. I'm not the only person who thinks that either. And so in this episode, the family is about to have a visitor that their father invited. So basically, kind of like the, like, you know, um, I forget what they call these people, like homeowners, like association type thing, where it's like the person in charge supposed to evaluate the neighborhood and the dad invited him in the house. This upsets the mom who's having a bit of a hair day. She's having a bit of a static cling, if you will, because like her powers is attracting all the like, you know, static electricity in the house and everything's just like sticking to her. Not only that, but when she touches stuff, uh, let's just say you're going to get like a jolt. <laughs> and so Hartley's going to help out with helping them pass their like evaluation and make sure everything goes smoothly. Well, Kobe is really, really upset. See, he's happy he finally has superpowers, but... He never gets to do anything villainous along with his family because he gets to miss out because his power just now came. So Jake and Amy are going to help him out. So they take him to the school. And so Jake dresses up as a superhero and he's all like, yeah. but of course, you know, Kobe knows it's him. And so basically he's all like, well, you broke into a school. So, you know, that's villainous right there. But the door was unlocked. So that's not very villainous. I like how Jake is trying to like, you know, make Kobe happy and everything. I go, uh, it's something Amy won't do unless it's something like villainous to go along with it. And so this causes Amy and Jake to have a huge blowout argument. And they start using their powers on one another. And it's pretty cool seeing them use their power, but yeah, they're getting tossed around and stuff. Well, Jake can't take it no more and he picks up a chair and he flings it at Amy. She gets out the way and it knocks the crap out of Kobe. He gets sent flying. Turns out he hurt his leg bad. And so Amy wants to take him to the hospital, but Jake's kind of like, you know, can't because they'll ask too many questions. So she has the idea of, hey, he'll turn into an animal and they could take him to a vet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking to myself, okay, how is this going to play out? This could be very hilarious. <laughs> and it is. <laughs> so back with the parents and everything, the homeowner uh, manager type person, he comes over. And of course, you know, Hartley and, and the dad are trying to like um, unvillain proof the house. Because the dad has a bunch of face melters everywhere and stuff like that. Well, the actor who um, plays the manager type dude... I remember him from Young and Hungry. He played like the assistant. And Young and Hungry was a more mature comedy show that Emily Osment was in. And she played, I think her name was Lola in um, Hannah Montana. She was the best friend in Hannah Montana. So he's over there. And of course, the mom is still like steady clingy and stuff. But she has to play it off and everything. Her hair is a mess, but she has to like pull it down and all kind of stuff. So basically, she's like, you know, she can't touch nothing because, of course, she'll jolt the crap out of him. So Hartley's doing her best to like deflect and everything. Hartley's outfit in this is too cute. Anyway, so the mom is like holding on to a pillow and it's absorbing all her electrical energy and the pillow sets on fire. <laughs> He doesn't realize this and the mom is just trying her best to put it out Then she's touching onto the sofa and the sofa is just like electrocuting, but the sofa does not catch on fire Anyways, but the fire from the pillow causes it to get a little hot in the house So so the dads are like, oh, I'll fix the um, thermostat Well, he fixed it too good <laughs> And it's like a giant wind gust just blowing out through the house it, 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 it's, it's, it's like a 
I forget what they call it. It's just a huge like wind gust and it's constantly blowing. So it blows them all to the door and stuff is just um, flying like everywhere in the house. So back with the kids, Kobe's in a cage. And so we don't know where he is, but he pretended to be a bobcat. And they're all like, well, they don't take bobcats. So Amy's going down and he's constantly changing into different animals and she's disapproving. But then she's like, all right, fine, that turtle's okay. <laughs> so he his leg is fixed and everything but the veterinarian lady informs them that he's a rare species of turtle in texas so he's part of the endangered species act and so they have to call like um animal protection and everything so he is screwed <laughs> so amy and jake go into the room and you know they're trying to like figure out how to open his cage and stuff and it's a five digit code on the computer. They think they can crack it, but of course they can't. So when animal control is nearing and everything, and also the problem, his powers are glitching out. So his human head is on his turtle body. The CGI on that is pretty good, but a little wonky on the rendering. So anyway, he's all like, just use one, two, three, four, five. And that's like the dumbest code ever, but it works. <laughs> And so, like, as they go home, the wind is still blowing. And it blows Amy and Jake to, like, the door with everybody else. And so, next thing you know, this cyclone comes in. And I'm thinking to myself, ah, oh, crap, the, the, the dad really, like, screwed up. But the mom thinks it might be Kobe. And so, what he did is that he made himself into a cyclone to suck up all the air. And it caused it to stop. This, of course, freaks out the homeowner, dude. And so, like, you know, he doesn't know what's going on, but he's suspicious. But he, eventually, he just thinks it's, like, nothing and everything and, like, leaves. And so, that's basically, like, you know, the episode until the end when they give Kobe his brand, or his very first super villain outfit. And his outfit's pretty cool, but I've seen that outfit before in the Spider-Man PS4 or 5 game and stuff. Remember the super villain in that? Like, her outfit looks just like his, so yeah. <laughs> so anyway, it's a cool montage. Oh, not montage, it's a cool pose, like super villain pose. The dad, you know, they all, the family's all posing like super villains all in their costumes, and, he, and the dad's all like, now let's take these outfits off and like be normal people again. <laughs> <laughs> Which kind of suck for them, man, because they just want to be super villains. So everybody leaves, and Kobe's just there, and he's trying to take off his helmet, but it's stuck. <laughs> so he asks his friends that are mice or rats to like help, because apparently, when they went to go do their super villain stuff, Kobe had to stay with a um, babysitter, but it wasn't really a babysitter; it was just rats. <laughs> Ah, oh, this show is too hilarious. It's not over the top, um, top, but it's not overly cheesy as well. The only thing I don't like is the laugh track. It's just like TV is moving away from laugh tracks. I don't know why they added that. Alrighty, well, I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.